So Claude, we're going to go on a tour of your office. This is where um, you do all of your local uh, activities and local work yes. in the, uh, the riding of Nicobelt yes. as an MP. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in what? What, what would you describe this? Is this do, do we call this the uh, Doug Hansen building? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the uh, building that uh, my office is in. We have a, a pocket pocket lawyers next door. Uh, we have Dr. Hansen upstairs. I don't know if there's an official name for this building, uh, but those are the three services you can get here. And the, the address is? Uh, 2980. It's around that. It's, yeah, it's, 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 right, it's right across from uh, McDonald's. Star, uh, gas star. And right gas across station. from McDonald's, isn't yeah, it? Close to McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay, let's take us in. We're going to go on a Come tour on of the office. And Come on in. See what we've got in here. So a person coming into your office yep. would come into the waiting room. And I guess this is where... This is where uh, people sit when there are uh, more than one customer in the office at a time. Okay. And... Uh, I noticed a whole bunch of uh, clipboards bunch, on here. What, yeah, what are these all about? a whole bunch of uh, petitions here. Uh, while people are waiting, sitting here to get service with the, uh, with the girls, they can sign, sign petitions. So there's all kinds of petitions. There's the Alzheimer's petition. There's a Canada Post petition. Uh, there's several of them. Uh, they're all um, House of Commons petitions. In order for us to, to um, present the petition into the House of Commons, there are specific rules we have to follow. And if the rules are not followed, then we can't present the petitions. So we get these petitions uh, approved by the House of Commons before we bring them in here uh, to make sure that when uh, we have uh, enough names, uh, each petition has to have a minimum of 25 names on it to be so, presented. So are these things that you're doing yourself or, or part of your, your party is doing? Well, the, these the petitions, some, some of these petitions are mine, especially the Alzheimer's petition. It's, it, it's my, uh, my project. And uh, uh, some of the petitions I get from uh, uh, organizations. Some of them I might get from other MPs. Uh, we have the Canada Post petition here. And these, these petitions are all uh, popular petitions because uh, people come in, wait here, and sign them. So, so I guess if people find out that there is a petition going on at, at, at Parliament, yeah. then chances are they could probably be able to come here and sign? Chances sign. are, but not necessarily all of them because then that's all we'd have here which would be petitions. Oh. I, I, I like to keep the petitions that are specific to, uh, to the North or, or Nickel Belt. Uh, okay. Can Canada Post petition is specific to Canada. Uh, my Alzheimer petitions is also specific to, to all of Canada. It's just not in, in Nickel Belt. So we have some of these uh, Alzheimer petitions uh, right across the country. Uh, I do a lot of work with the Canadian Alzheimer Society, and uh, they uh, have uh, petitions in their uh, offices, and they get people uh, to come in and sign sign the petitions. Are they important? Like, they're do very, they, are they very useful? important. Very important. Uh, it, it's to make the uh, the government aware that uh, people are concerned about uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, Canada needs an Alzheimer petition, an Alzheimer strategy. And uh, I, I've been working on this now for the last couple of years, and it's been very successful. I, I've met uh, a lot of um, different um, Alzheimer's society. We have a very, very good one here in Sudbury. If uh, people uh, who uh, know somebody with Alzheimer's, they should visit uh, the site in Sudbury because it's an ideal site. Good, interesting. I didn't realize that petitions had that much weight. Yeah, they do have Parliament. a lot of weight. So people do. Everybody that signs those petitions are voters. So voters Counts. have, they count. Good. I noticed on the wall, uh, you've got a certificate. Is that yeah. anything sig significant well, up there? Uh, that's my uh, certificate that I signed when I was elected. Uh, it's uh, dated October 24th, uh, 19, uh, uh, 2008. And that's when I uh, officially became a uh, member of parliament for Nickel Belt. Oh, really? Yeah. We have to sign these uh, certificates every time we get uh, elected or re-elected. And you've been in ever since then? Yeah, I've been in since uh, October 24, 2008. And for reading material, I guess you've got... Uh, well, well, this is uh, all kinds of uh, information that the uh, clients that come in can, uh, can access. Passports, of course, are, are uh, very popular in this office. And then there's uh, uh, things to, to remember when you're going on a trip. It gives you uh, hints of uh, what you need. 
And there's uh, for seniors, there's some, uh, especially this here is for uh, a guide to the services for seniors. Uh, we have them uh, in both, uh, both official languages. Everything in this office is bilingual. And that has to be that way because of the population of Nickel Belt. I mean, it's uh, almost 50-50 French-English. So everything that comes out of this office is bilingual. Okay. And, and so people are living in, in the, the riding then. Um, they can actually use this office as a resource, yes. a library resource? They can. Absolutely. I imagine most of the stuff is on, online too. Yes, most of it is online. The government is going to, uh, wants to put more stuff online. They, they want to put everything online. But for seniors, it doesn't always work. It, it works uh, quite well with the younger generation. A lot, a lot of seniors don't have access to, to computers. Uh, they don't know how to use computers. Uh, they may, may have uh, computers just to communi communicate with their kids. And this is our, uh, our pure later guy who's coming in to pick up the passports. Yeah. <laughs> just a one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so you have passports going in and out? Yeah, every, uh, every Thursday they come in and pick up our uh, weekly passports. Right. And it's usually anywhere between 40 and 60 a week. We spend a lot of time in here uh, uh, filling out passports for uh, people. Okay, so, but people can get their passports on their own, right? They can get their passports on their, on their own. Uh, they can get a, a, a form at the post office. Uh, but if they come here, uh, we'd get them to sign a, a consent form. We'll mail it for them. We'll, we'll help, help them fill out the, the passport properly, make sure there's no mistakes on it, make sure the pictures are okay. And then every Thursday, we'll mail, mail it out at, at no cost. Oh, really? And then... Uh, That's all done free of charge. Free of charge. Once the, um, they've uh, filled out their passport, we get them to sign a consent form. And that means that if there's a, uh, an error or there's something missing on the passport, which doesn't happen very often, if the passport gets lost, which happens uh, once in a while, not very often, then uh, Passport Canada can call us here and then we can give them all of the details. If we, they don't sign a consent form, then, then Passport Canada has to contact the, the client and sometimes that's not easy. Wow, so that's quite a service. Yeah. Really a service. So who do we have working in here? Well, over here we have uh, Michelle Leving. She's uh, fairly new here. She's only been here a couple of weeks. Uh, she's replacing one of uh, my uh, other employees that's off on sick leave. And uh, she's very, uh, very helpful. Good. She's very good on the computer because she's young. She's young and she's yeah. back in the corner. Back in the corner. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, Ghislaine uh, Millet. Uh, I hired her on a contract also for, for three months, and that was uh, three and a half years ago. Okay. So uh, obviously she's, she's happy here, I guess. It didn't get the memo that it was time to leave. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> and this is where all the, most of the work gets done here. Now, I, I know you don't spend all that much time in the office, so, so I guess we're looking at the, uh, the main contact person right here. Right here. These are the main That's contact people. Yeah. yeah. I try to be here minimum one day a week, minimum. As when I'm in Ottawa, uh, I have to be in Ottawa. So normally when I'm in Ottawa, I get to either spend Monday here or Friday uh, because we get, we get a day to, to work in our constituency office. But during the summer month, I'm here every day. Okay. And you've got another office too? I've got another office in Sturgeon Falls. And because Nickel Belt is so big, I needed two, two, uh, two different offices. I mean, Nickel Belt to, to the west goes as far as Foliette, and to the east it goes to the border of uh, North Bay. And uh, north, uh, River Valley, to Killarney in the south. So that's, that's very yeah. big. So Jocelyn, I guess most of the time when people are calling then, you're the one that has to uh, yes. deal with their issues yes. in, in Claude's absence. That's right. We, take an, uh, we do an intake. Uh, name, address, uh, phone number, email address, uh, the nature of the, uh, the issue, and uh, we take it from there. We have contacts with uh, Revenue Canada Employment Insurance. We have direct lines. So usually uh, within 48 hours we can get uh, an answer on if there's missing information or not. So Claude doesn't have to be involved with all of the activity that's in the office. No, I don't, I don't have to. No, okay. no but 
when there's uh, when they have a problem, if, if there's a certain problem, uh, then I can deal with the minister. No. Yes, and that has happened. That, quite that happens quite often. How do you buy? When I can just cross the floor and go talk to the minister about employment insurance, uh, CRA, or Fednor. So there must be an awful lot of times when you're on the phone or you're on the email getting yes. hold of quotes well, saying, yeah. by the way, we've got this problem. Mm -hmm. yes. Can you see what you can do? So, so it's there. It's nice because we can email the intake. He has all the information and basically can just go forward with getting answers. Most of the, the cases here are the files. They can resolve themselves. But then sometimes they, they hit a brick wall, and that's where I can go to the minister and ask for help. Is, is there much um, what you would call political? issues that come through this office, or is most of it very practical and day-to-day? Well, -day? It's day-to-day it's -day practical issues. Uh, we're, we're not, uh, because this is an MP office, we're not supposed to do politics out of this office. I mean, I can't run my writing association out of this office. That's all illegal. So whatever whatever happens in here, uh, it, it has to do with the constituents. constituents. So really, then, it, it, it doesn't matter which party you happen to be from. You're, you're doing the same kind of work that... Yep. Anybody else? Yeah. Would? So there's really no politics at all. Well, there's always a little bit well, of politics, will, yeah. but uh, uh, we try to uh, resolve the problems as best as we can. And I imagine that that's uh, a requirement. Yeah, it is a requirement. And like Jocelyn was saying, we have uh, uh, what we call MP contacts. Uh, if you were to pick up the phone and uh, call C uh, Canada Revenue, for it, for example, you'd never get an answer. You're going to get a recording. You can't even get through. Can't get through. Uh, we can get through right away because we have specific numbers and uh, specific people that will look after us. Hmm. They're called MP contacts, and we have them throughout the departments of the government departments. So, what what kinds of things would it, would a constituent use this office for? Like passports, I, I... employment insurance. Okay. Um, they've been laid off, or they're sick. They have to go on the sick benefits. Um, they've been waiting for six weeks, two months, and I mean, they haven't heard anything. They can't get through the call center lines, so they will come to us. And sometimes it's just a matter of the file getting attention. They just pull it out of the file. And most have of it? the time, within 48 hours, these cool. people can have their money. So having a call from this office is a lot easier than doing it on yes. your own. Oh, yeah. definitely. It's, yes. it's almost impossible to do it on your own. Because like I said a while ago, you're going to get a call center. And if they answer. Uh, when we call, they answer. Jeez. So what are your hours? Um, we're here at 9 till 4.30, but we're open to the public 9.30 to 4.30 every day. Every day? Yes. Except Thursdays, it's our down day. Uh, we get caught up on our files and we're close to the public. So that's your busiest day? Basically because we do appointments, you know, um, you know, constituent her having a real hard time and I mean, they need more private talk, like I mean, such as uh, applying for the dis uh, CPT disability. Like I mean, there's tons of uh, questionnaires and so it's very time mm. consuming and when you have you know, other people walking in and out of the office, like... I imagine there's a lot of appointments that are made for Claude as well when he's going to be in? Or do you yes. make your own? <laughs> there's, quite, there's quite a few. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This morning I had an appointment with uh, Pelly Mining from, uh, uh, from Elliott Lake because I was, uh, I'm on the, I was on the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, I had a lot of dealings with them in the past and uh, uh, they wanted to meet me uh, this morning to talk about uh, rare earth, which is a... Uh, a, a material, a mineral. It's called rare earth, but it's not that rare. We just don't. Uh, we haven't developed it yet in Canada. Uh, so far, China's got all of the uh, uh, the market. Probably 95% of the market is from China. So, uh, if they were ever to uh, uh, cut us off, I mean, we'd, we'd be in uh, dire straits. And uh, they have uh, cut off one country already, so they don't know what to do next. Because rare, rare, uh, uh, rare uh, earth material is used in everything. It's used in cars, it's used in magnets, it's used in cell phones, it's used in computers. It's used everywhere. Wow. Must be exciting. 
you know, two weeks are the same. No. No two, no two days are no the two same. Days. And you can never predict the date. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, you, and yet the, the people that come in here, that while it doesn't seem as high level as, as resource development or, or international mm -hmm. affairs, yeah. it's the most important thing in their life at that time, isn't yeah. it? Exactly, yes. Yeah. It's they, they kind of like a crisis. Issues. Yeah, crises, yeah. Yeah, when, when uh, somebody uh, has uh, lost their job and they're not getting any employment insurance, uh, they don't really care about the international markets. And they don't care yeah. that the unemployment rate is uh, yeah. 7%. For they them, it's 100%. Want, it's 100% and, and they want money to put food on the table yeah. or, or to pay their uh, their heating or whatever. This is interesting. So it's been a long three months. It's been a long three months, yeah. But you're happy. Yeah, I'm still here, I'm yeah. happy. Well, yeah. it's, like I say, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's interesting. And it's very... Um, People are very grateful that mm -hmm. we're able to help them. Well, wow, I guess. Like, you know, so you can it cut, makes it all worthwhile. Cut through a lot of that red tape. Yes. When people walk through the door, a lot of them, not all of them, but some of them are really upset and they need help. But once they walk out of here, they're generally speaking very happy. They have hope. They have hope. And really, drop in. If there's nothing, if you can't help them right away, you can set up an appointment. Yep. Yes. And I mean, through the internet or contacts, we can get whatever information they require because most cases are never the same. Like, especially now, like we're dealing dealing with a lot of immigration cases because they've closed the office here in Sudbury. So, like, I mean, we have no training. We have to rely on the internet and our contact through email and phone. So it makes it kind of and, and is this is this office pretty much as large as you're allowed to have in? Uh... Well, you can have as large as you can afford. Okay, so and there's a budget. Have, there's a, a budget. There's a budget, and uh, you can't uh, spend overspend your budget because then it comes out of your pocket. So and it's the same kind of budget for same kind of for budget. everybody. Basically, for there's a basic budget, and then there's a couple of criteria. Uh, one is the uh, uh, you get extra for the size of your writing, and I get that because nickel belt is so big. And then there's an extra for the population. If you're over 110,000 or something like that, you get extra money. What's important here, I think, is that not being a member of the party in power doesn't affect anything that happens in this office. Nothing at all. Because it's Nothing like at all. this office is as if everybody's everybody's equal. This, everybody's equal. Yeah. All. Yeah. Perfect. A lot of people will come in here, especially at first, and they'll say, "Well, I voted for you, so I need your help." <laughs> it doesn't matter doesn't if you matter. voted for me or no. not. <clears throat> no, we're you here just, to help. You just happen to be the office manager yeah, right now. Because everybody that walks through this door has voted for us, so it doesn't yeah. matter. No, and it, no. whether they voted they're for you or not, way. they're all constituents. They're all. Yeah, they're all constituents. They're all. Yep. They all voted for me, or I'm yep. related to them somehow. <laughs> so, so show us where you hide when you're here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This is our storage room. It's. Uh, everybody has to have a storage room. Yeah, you have a storage room. Yeah. And this is where I uh, this is this is where I sit when I'm when I'm here. Uh, like I said a while ago, I'm here at least uh, once a week uh, when Parliament is in session. Sometimes I'm here Saturdays and Sundays also. Uh, but uh, during the uh, the holidays or what are called holidays are not really holidays for the MP. I mean, I'm not in Ottawa, so people think I'm on holidays, but I'm not. I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. here in, in, in Belcaron and I try to go to Sturton Falls at least once a week. At least once a week. Good. So, I guess this is where you would hold an awful lot of your this is where confidential I have, meetings, your private meetings. meetings in here, yeah. And if the, if the staff during the public hours, if the staff need to use this office uh, because there's some confidentiality, uh, they, they can come in and, and use this office. Interesting picture on the wall. Is this? Uh, that is the picture that was taken when the, the very first time I was uh, uh, assigned my inauguration papers when I okay. became uh, an MP. And those are some of those were my my staff, uh, my family, and some friends. Such an important moment. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That was the very first time, the very first day where I became an official MP. No regrets so far? No regrets. No regrets. Because it was a change from what you were doing before, wasn't it? <laughs> Big change. <laughs> Big change from what I was doing before, but uh, I've, I've said it all along. When, when it becomes uh, a, a job that I don't like anymore, I'm just going to get out. That's all.
As long as the people in Nickel Belt are happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, like there's nothing glamorous or it's, it's, no. this is an office. It's, it's an office. And you say you're here once a week, basically? Well, it, when, when uh, Parliament is, is in session, I'm here at minimum once a week. Uh, but when Parliament is closed, I'm here five days a week, sometimes six. So when you're, you're sitting, mm -hmm. or, or you might as well take a seat for a minute, we'll get out of the light. But when you're, you're I guess, in session, you try to get here once a week, that's, that's a lot of traveling, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a lot of traveling, uh, especially since uh, bearskin stopped flying directly to Ottawa. I, I used to fly bearskin uh, regularly. Uh, I'd go from uh, I'd go from home to the airport to Ottawa and to my apartment. Uh, but now that bearskin's not flying anymore into Ottawa, if I'm flying, I have to go to the Sudbury Airport, the Toronto Airport, the Ottawa Airport. Wow! And uh, it, it takes me longer to I fly. I was going to say it takes you less time to drive, doesn't it? I, I normally I, at this time of year I'll always drive. I I will fly in. February, March, when the weather is really bad, but I try to avoid it as much as possible because it's happened to me several times when I get to the airport and the flight is canceled. I get to Toronto and the flight to, Tr to Ottawa is canceled, so then I have to sleep in, 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 in Toronto, uh, which makes it uh, awkward because I lose a lot of time. Do you spend much time communicating with uh, the provincial members? Uh, on certain issues, yes, I do, uh, especially here in Nickel Belt, where I have Franz Jelena, who's my, my counterpart, and uh, uh, we do a lot of things together, uh, a lot of events together. Uh, because Nickel Belt is so big, we do what is called community clinics. So her and I will uh, we'll jump in a, her car or my car or whatever, whoever's turn it is, and we'll drive up to Foliette. Uh, we'll do that a uh, minimum of twice a year. Uh, maybe three times a year, and we'll do a clinic. We'll dr we'll drive from here to Foliette. We'll do a, a clinic in in Foliette. Then we'll go to Metogamy and do a clinic there. Then we'll go to Guagua and do a clinic there. And then sometimes we go up to West Street to do a, a clinic there. So it, it's a couple of days. What a huge riding! It's huge. It's huge. And uh, then we'll we'll do clinics in the south end of Sudbury, uh, Wanup, Killarney. Um, French River, uh, Garden Village, First Nations, one of a take. Wow. It's, it's just huge. And you've got two offices. i got two, well, three, counting the one in Ottawa. Interesting. Well, that's great. Uh, we're, we're going to make sure there's, there's uh, an opportunity to, to cover some of the specific topics mm -hmm. with uh, Gislin and, uh, and, and your other staff, and, and possibly with you as well when we have a chance to mm -hmm. get you. Uh, alone for 10 or 15 minutes, but um, it's great. We, we've got a website on Valleys today. We've, we know there's links to, um, to, to your own government sites mm -hmm. that, yeah. that people can access. Yeah. And I think the big thing I want to get across to people is that it doesn't matter who you voted for, it doesn't even matter if you voted, that this office is here to serve, it's here to serve the people yeah. from Nickel Belt. People, um, have a hard time differentiating between municipal, provincial, and federal politics. So we'll, we'll have people uh, call us or walk in here, they have a municipal problem, and then we, 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 we know we can't help them, so we direct them to the councillor in, in their area, and uh, hopefully the councillor will, will help, them, help them. I think that's good that, that actually all three levels probably do the same thing. I'm sure yeah. even councillors get calls and, and yeah. they're told, look, yeah. we'd like to help you, but that's a... Federal, federal jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Uh, Here's uh, uh, the phone number that you should call. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we get lots of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. The last, um, last three weeks have, have been particularly busy because of graduations. Right. Uh, I try to go to as many graduations as I can. I can't make them all. It's mm -hmm. impossible because some, sometimes there's maybe three or four in one night. Mm -hmm. And especially this year was particularly difficult because we were in Ottawa so late. So I was only able to do uh, three graduations this year. Wow. Uh, so it, it, it's... Even finding time for those is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Claude, thanks for the tour. It's, um, well, you're I don't think we've missed 
too much. There's a lot of interesting uh, things around, but uh, I think this should give people an idea of what this mm-hmm. office is all about and yep. and, uh, and what uh, you know some of the topics are that they can uh, be helped with. We can help people with pretty much anything that's federal. Good. And the we doors can, are always open. Doors are always open. Uh, we do have um, some students that come in here to, to, to do their volunteer hours. Oh. We get those once in a while, and they really appreciate it. Um, we have some interns also sometimes that will come in here. Uh, they have to do specific jobs, and we help them th- through that. Uh, oh, that's good. So and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really helpful. It's a real training area. Yeah. It's great. Thanks for your time. We'll, we'll definitely uh, continue this later on. Well, I hope this was helpful. Very. Thanks. Thank you.